Hello everyone. Sorry I'm late again, but it does take a little time to get dressed. My poor husband has to do up all these laces and all the corset laces. So hello, hello. I'm really, really, really proud of this dress. So I put on my ball gown version of the tartan dress. Ta-da! And I love how this skirt moves. It's fabulous. I gotta walk in and out of the picture so you can see how fabulous this skirt is. This is like my favorite skirt ever. It's so beautiful. Ta-da! So this is the evening version, I'll bring it a little closer now, of my um, tartan ensemble. I hope you can see the whole thing. I'm very nearsighted. I didn't have much time to do hair and makeup, so the hair and makeup isn't great, but the dress is fabulous. Ta-da, ta-da. Give you all the views. Ta -da. <laughs> so let's see. Hey, Lori. Hey, Joanne. So, yes, um, this is like a fabulous dress. So this is another turn of the century, you know, circa 1900 to maybe 1910 um, dress um, characterized by, again, the the pigeon breast or the s curve silhouette so busty here a little bum pad here very voluptuous the the illusion of the small waist because of um the way the dress is cut and padded which you know i'm also corseted pretty tight um let's see hey yvonne <laughs> so i'm just trying to say hello to everybody i see names popping up and Peggy. So this is, um, this might be my favorite. It, these aren't really my best colors. I don't usually do black, but the plaid kind of breaks it up. Black is not a good color on me. Um, I'm much, I look much, much better in jewel tones. But um, I really, really like the cut and shape of this dress. And the reason I use this plaid is because I wanted to make a plaid or tartan dress. Um, this, um, this was an experiment for me. I wanted to cut it on the bias to give all the interesting shapes. So I did this on the bias. I did the skirt on the bias. I even did the jacket on the bias, which the jacket is more for day wear, um, to be worn with a blouse. Uh, the other pieces of this dress, this has a matching jacket, a blouse, and a corselet or a wide belt with some boning in it that's the jacket and the corselet are more day wear this is the evening wear but i'll show you the other pieces um i don't have the blouse but here's the the corselet i made it actually reversible so it's on this side it's velvet with um, tartan bias binding and then on the other side it's just got the tartan so i wouldn't wear it with the evening bodice it would be worn with the jacket so that can be worn two ways. And then this jacket I absolutely love, which I guess I can put it on with the, it's not really for evening, but I'll put it on just so you can see. So here's the um, jacket that I made to go with this outfit. So this is again, a turn of the century. Um, this is good from the later 1890s into the early 1900s um the dress and the jacket so i really i spent five days on this outfit which is about as long as i've spent on anything the only other outfit that i spent five days on was the plum 1890s walking dress um, that i recently sold um that was to date one of my favorites it was the hardest thing i made this was as hard. This is one of the hardest things I've made. Um, couple reasons. This bodice, which I love now, I hated when I was making it because the pattern was really bad. I had to completely recut the pattern, the sizing. It was a one size pattern and the sizing wasn't even close. So I had to keep cutting and trying it on, basting and cutting and basting. And then it, it took me, it, I could have, it took an extra day just to get the pattern for this bodice figured out. 
Um, I don't know if I would even use it again, but I do still have the pieces I used for this. So I wouldn't make it for someone else because it would be too hard to fit them because it was so hard to fit. So um, this gave me a hard time, but I'm really, really, really pleased with the end result. I really like the bodice. Oh, the bow, I told you I like to make things that are changeable. So this is the other thing, this bow snaps on. So here's the bodice without the bow. So um, I wanted to do this so I can change the front. I can put something else on the front if I want to, but I really loved this um, big black velvet bow with the um, brooch. So I decided to put it on with snaps that you cannot see, and that holds it perfectly in place. So um, let's see, what else can I say about this dress? So this was an experiment. Um, in between commissions, I need to do some really challenging things so that I can learn, uh, but also so that people who follow me and people who might want dresses have a better idea of what I can do, because I can do a lot now. <laughs> I, can, I feel like I can do just about anything, you know? Um, this was really, really a good one. I'm very happy. And uh, even though it's supposed to be a Regency theme for the Historical Romance Retreat, um, for the ball, I might, I could even take this for my ball game gown. I was, I was going to take the lilac um, dress I made for the Biltmore, and I might still do that, but it's really hard to pack because it's, it's a big dress. It has a huge train and I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to pack it very easily. So um, I have to think about that when I'm packing things, when I'm planning my wardrobe. But again, for those who haven't seen it yet, I have to walk, I'll, I'll walk back and forth. I'm gonna move the camera back and I'm gonna move around a little bit just so, see, ooh, good cleavage shot there, huh? <laughs> I have some bosoms. <laughs> it's this corset. Okay, so. Um, I just want to walk a little bit just so you can see how beautiful and elegant this is. And this is taffeta. It's a tartan uh, taffeta in kind of an off-white gold black. And it has a little bit of actual white in it. So, um, anyway, now I guess I'll move the camera up close and I will sit down and I will chat and hopefully answer some questions if you guys have any questions. So I dropped my belt. The only thing, this is a long line corset, extremely hard to bend over. I can't, it, it comes, the corset itself comes all the way down to here. So bending here is very, very difficult because it comes like right in front of my thighs. I'm really short torso too. So maybe if I had a longer torso, it wouldn't be a problem but I had to have my husband help me put my shoes on. And even sitting down, the corset's here and it's kind of a little uncomfortable to sit in, I guess, because I'm so short <laughs> in my torso. Um, okay, well, the gloves are coming off now so I can see what's going on. Um, so, oh, Cindy, what shoes am I wearing? Oh, I will show you. My shoes actually happen to match my dress. Okay, let me see if I can show you my shoe. Can I tilt this down? All right, there we go. Here's my shoe. So these happen to work really well. Can you see them? I don't wanna flash anything more than my shoe. They've got the buttons on them. They're the little booties with the buttons and they happen to be um, just about the perfect color to wear with this. They're kind of a, I guess a taupey color. So um, yeah, this, I happen to have these. I bought these years ago at a thrift store and now I can wear them because they're suitable for um, this era that I'm doing. So I have to move the camera even closer because I can't see you guys. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So my corset, my bosom, I feel like I need to cover the bosom that's <laughs> right in your face. Okay, so um, 
I'm just looking, came out great looking. Thank you, Cindy. It was a lot of work. It was not an easy dress to make at all, but I'm really happy with it. And um, actually, I, I could do something very similar to this top if somebody wanted. It wouldn't be exactly the same, but I could do something really similar. I have some other patterns that would work. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, Danny, actually, it does fit perfectly. And Danny, this is the first time I've put any of it on. Um, I haven't, I didn't try it on at all when I was making it. I just used my mannequin, my dress form. So, um, my dress form is, is really good. I, I have her adjusted just about perfectly. So I can pretty much, if it fits the dress form, I know it's going to fit me, which makes it so much easier. So for any of you guys that sew or want to sew, number one suggestion, get a dress form and make sure that it is, um, padded and adjusted to your specific measurements because it, it really makes sewing, it makes it fun and not just easier, but it makes it fun because you can put it on and see what it's going to look like on you. So, um, oh, so a couple people asked me about my shoes. So I showed you my shoes. Um, would you carry a bag with the outfit? Yes. Um, yes, a little purse. Actually, I have a little white beaded purse. It's probably from the 20s or 30s um, that I would carry, um, or what would probably work, I could, uh, take some black velvet and make a black velvet reticule. That would work really, really well with this. I haven't made one, but just, you know, a little drawstring bag that, that would work actually best, better than the beaded bag. Um, I never think of purses. I'm not, I've never been, um, oh, oh Melissa, the bosom looks wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a bosom in this corset, in this outfit. <laughs> oh, so, hey, Jane. Hey, Linda. Hey, Tina. So, yeah, um, this was a lot of fun. I really, really like this era. I need to work on the hair, though, and my roots are showing up. I've got a hair appointment tomorrow to fix my color. But I didn't have a lot of time to monkey with my hair. By the time I got the dress finished and then I made dinner for my family and, you know, I, I went to put on some makeup, but I really, I didn't have time to mess much. This is my hair. I could have put a wig on, but I didn't have any wigs that were appropriately styled. So I just thought, oh, I'll do the best I can. Um, but when I wear this again, um, I'll do my hair much better. I'll take my time and I'll, I'll try to get it right. Or I'll wear a wig that's been appropriately styled. So um, this would look good with red hair. This outfit would look really, really good with red hair. Uh, I have two red wigs, so I might even do that. But it's not bad with the blonde because um, of the gold in it, I guess. So, hey, Barb. Hey, Lori. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Cindy. Thank you. Glad I'm entertaining y'all. Uh, thank you, Barbie. <laughs> so for those of you who tuned in late, um, watch the beginning so you can see the whole dress. Um, do I have an event plan for the dress? Oh, um, Melissa, the historical romance retreat. Are you going? You know, we've all been talking about it. It's in September and it would be so much fun if you would join us. It's out in Riverside, California. Everybody who's watching. You know, if you want to dress up and, and meet your favorite historical romance authors, the Historical Romance Retreat, um, I think she's moving it next year. It won't be in California next year, but this year in September, it's the week of my birthday. I think it's the 11th to the 14th or 11th to the 15th. Anyway, it's that week. My birthday falls on the 13th of September. I will be 55. Oh, my God. AARP time. <laughs> so, anyway... <laughs> Um, yes, at the Historical Romance Retreat, you can play dress up as much as you want, and it is so fun. There's an afternoon tea, there's a grand ball, there's a harlots and highwaymen party, there's a, um, speakeasy, you know, kind of Gatsby era party, um, and I don't know what else. There's some other things, too. Um, my husband's going with me this year. They do have a whole track for gentlemen. Uh, in fact, I proposed a workshop. Um, I'm going to be doing a workshop on gentlemen's clothing, um, as well as something on Regency fashions. 
So I'll be doing um, two short workshops, just, you know, fun and informative. Um, and it is really a great time. So if any of you guys um, would like to go to the West Coast or are on the West Coast, check it out. It's Historical Romance Retreat. Renee Bernard is uh, the author and, you know, uh, uh, she, she owns the event. I mean, I don't know what to call her. <laughs> She's the event organizer. Um, so, uh, she and Delilah Marvell started this about four years ago and Renee's taken it over by her lonesome now. Um, but I highly recommend it. It's a great time. I've been, this will be my third year going. I missed last year only because I was in Scotland. I had a chance to go to Scotland. So I did that instead last year. Um, so thank you, Lori. Oh, Cindy, I just told you, I'm going to be 55. I was born September 13th, 1964. So, um, oh, thank you, Joanne. Um, yeah, Melissa, I hope you, hope you join us. If you have any questions, you know, drop me a line. But, um, yeah, the website is historicalromanceretreat.com, I believe. Um, so it's coming up pretty soon. September's not that far away. Excuse me. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I didn't get a nap today. I, I've been sewing very hard. <laughs> um, so, yes, have, I've been having fun. And now it is, oh, Tina and Marie, fellow Virgo. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a Virgo. I'm definitely a Virgo. So, um, okay, so let's see. Now that I've done this dress, it took me five days to finish this. Uh, now I have some commissions to do. Um, tomorrow I'm doing a black velvet jacket for Lori. Um, I should get that done in half a day and then I'll send her stuff out. And then I have um, a turquoise outfit I'm doing. Tur kind of a, I guess, uh, I guess it's a turquoise. I don't know what, I don't know how to characterize the color. It's not a bright turquoise. It's kind of a dull turquoise. It's got a little bit of an iridescent gold in it. It's a real unusual color and it's embroidered with gold. It's some of that embroidered silk that I love so much. I'm going to be doing an outfit out of that um, next for somebody. That's a commission and that's going to be a skirt similar to this and a jacket and uh, I have to look. I can't remember if I was doing an evening bodice with that one or not or just a blouse and a skirt and a jacket and then let's see oh um holly bush wanted an outfit similar to this as well if you guys know her she's another historical romance author who writes this is the era she writes in so um i'm gonna be doing something for her and i've got a bunch i've got a bunch and melissa no i didn't forget you melissa coy i'm doing a um, renaissance outfit for her we have to talk about that a little bit i've got some ideas but uh, I've got to get some other ones done first. So um, let's see. And Tina, haven't forgotten you. I'll try to find something blue for Tina. So um, let's see. Hey, Pamela. Um, <laughs> and Tina wants one of everything. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I saw some blue the other day, um, Tina, that, you know, once I know... I have to, I have an idea for your dress, but I have to try it first to make sure it's going to work before I go and buy, you know, expensive material. So, um, I might go ahead and try it in the white cotton just to make it and make sure that the idea is going to work. And then if it works, then I go and buy some other material to make your actual dress. Hey, Jennifer. So... Um, I guess I'm going to keep it short tonight. I don't see really any questions, but I uh, wanted to show off the outfit, and I thought you guys would enjoy it. This one was a lot of fun. It was very challenging, but I like challenges, as long as they come out. If they don't come out, I don't like them. If something doesn't turn out, I'm never going to show it to you, but I only have a couple things that I've quit on because I just knew they were just not going to be good. Uh, so out of all the hundreds of things I've made, I've had maybe five or six things that I've abandoned because I just wasn't happy and they weren't worth fighting with to fix because I knew even if I fixed them, I just wasn't going to be happy with them in the end. So um, I guess that's pretty good. Only a handful of things I've quit on. 
So, hey, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sharon, did you see the beginning of the video? I was strutting around in this thing. Um, this is a pretty awesome dress, I have to say. It is pretty awesome. I like it. So, um, anyway, uh, I will be bringing it with me to the Historical Romance Retreat. So, you'll see it firsthand. Ta-da, ta-da. So, I guess I'm going to sign off now. Um, good night, everybody. And hopefully I'll have something fun to show you next week. Bye.